What an atmosphere. It's August 18, 2019. It's 3.30 on a Sunday afternoon. The referee is 42-year-old James Owens from the Ascomore Can Rush Club in County Wexford. It's his third All-Ireland final. It's Kilkenny versus Tipperary. The Cats against the Premier. Black and amber, blue and gold. The All-Ireland hurling final 2019 is up and running. Tipperary won the toss, playing from left to right. Sunshine right now, rain threatened. And an epic encounter between the neighbours. Killian Buckley laying it off. Farris, Connor Brown, referee blows his whistle. It's the first free in the All-Ireland final. Yeah, good burst through. I'm just looking. Ronan Maher has gone in full back on Colin Fenley. Brendan Maher gone in centre back uh, on TJ Reid. I think maybe those switches were expected. You know, they're going to be huge today. Ronan Maher and Colin Fenley, Hugh Lawler at the other end of the field. Uh, looking at Shane McCallan, he's actually gone right corner forward and Joey Holden there as well. So, look, you're going to have a few switches and changes early on before it settles down. TJ Reid in his 60th championship match. 31 year old. From Ballyhale Shamrocks. Captain of Kilkenny, and he leads by example. Yeah, lovely free for a free taker, you know, just in front of the goals, 40 yards out, he was never going to miss, a nice one to settle him in. And, uh... First puck out of the afternoon for Brian Hogan. 30 years ago today, his dad, Ken, played against Antrim in the All-Ireland Hurling Final. 1989, TJ Reid. Between the 45 and 65 metre line, looking around for a little bit of support, lays it off swiftly. Hugh Lawler. Good work by Paddy Deegan. Looking around, goes for the diagonal option as he saw the run by this man, Big Walter. Walter Walsh bearing down on goal, past the 20, laying it off. Here's a chance. A little bit of a fresh air, didn't connect. And that is an opportunity for Kilkenny. The referee's whistle is blown. But Kilkenny have settled early in Croke Park. Yeah. What a catch. Brilliant ball by Paddy Deegan. He saw the... Saw the I look at Walter Walsh straight through and Colin Fenley. Brilliant hook there. Um, it was Ronan Maher with a brilliant hook and Colin Fenley. The goal was on and James Owens played a great advantage there as well in the build-up. TJ Reid. With five goals and 72 points coming into this All-Ireland final. 54 frees, two penalties, 6.65s on the sideline. And already, he's notched up two points in the All-Ireland final. And he has, Marty, but he, already he's worked great. But here's, here's Walter Walsh again, he makes a great catch. Uh, one and one there with John McGrath, how he caught, he was back there into Colin Fenley. And it was John McGrath actually, looking out for a hook by John McGrath. It was crucial. Back from corner forward, brilliant play by McGrath. Long ball up towards the Tipperary attack. Jason Ford sending it across field towards John O'Dwyer. Quick hands, just laying it off for his Michael Green. That's dropping inside the post, and it's over the bar. Michael Green, what a brilliant score. Yeah, lovely little flick there by Bubble Zoom with that. For Jason Ford, a great diagonal ball. The rain spilling down. And Michael Green is that type of player. If he settles into the game early, he can score four or five from play on a good day. Made his debut against uh, Limerick four years ago and scored a cracking goal, I recall. Great catch, Body Maher was hooked on his delivery, picked up by Paddy Deegan. Laying it back. Corey Walsh. Kilkenny go back into the attack again. Battle for possession, coming through as TJ Reid. Stopped on this occasion. Kyle Barrett comes charging out, stopped in his tracks. Lays it off, Body Maher is there. Stumbling but getting there. Ronan Maher, the brother, is also available. Ball is bubbling all over the place. Here comes Noel McGrath, vice captain of this Tipperary team, looking around to see who exactly is available. And it is pouring rain at the moment, making it difficult. Here comes Ronan Maher, scored nine points in the championship journey, and that is gone just to the wrong side of the post, some wide. Quick puck out from Owen Murphy. Saw the man available, John Donnelly. In the centre, it's Paddy Deegan, or Lachlan Gales. Paddy on the run. Paddy on a scoring spree, but not on this occasion. Ball is wide. And Marty, you can see, you know, in club level, you wouldn't see this, the quick puck outs, because the refs are trying to do everything. But quick puck out there, we saw the last day with Wexford as well, isolating the man on the sideline. And great ball by Murphy. Paddy Deegan will be disappointed that he didn't put that one over. Difficult afternoon it's going to be for 
the goalkeepers and anxious Liam Sheedy. Tuck out, dropping down into the Kilkenny half of the field. Picked up on this occasion by Conor Fogarty. Leaves it off. Paris John Donnelly. Ball slipped out of his grasp. Noel McGrath, hockey style, getting it in just a little bit. Paris John, uh, John McGrath, and that is a free. And the referee spotted it. Let's see what happened here. As he stepped out over the line, in fact. And it's going to be a silent ball. They yeah, continue dominating possession, Marty. You know, every puck has dropped down. Uh, Conor Fogarty won a few balls at Parik Walsh and tipped struggling to win possession in the half hour line, which is a worry for them. If that starts, uh, it's never a good sign for them. Conor Fogarty took the sideline ball. Comes fast, Noel McGrath sending it fast and direct into the full forward line. Kenny a little bit hesitant on the execution of the clearance, but uh, this is much better. As Connor Brown sweeps down into the Tipperary half of the field. Nicely picked up by Colin Fennelly. Lays it off for Richie Hogan. And Hogan hits it sweetly inside the post and over the bar. A uh, blistering start to this all Ireland yeah, final. Connor Brown doing very well in the middle field. Lovely ball into Fennelly and he's uh, flicked it to Richie Hogan. Maybe he was he was gone inside, he could have flicked it back over the top, but you know, players like to settle into a match. Richie Hogan, as we know, a brilliant player and uh, has been taken off in the last couple of matches, so he's going to be looking to make a big impact early. Brian Hogan going in short for his Barry Heffernan from the Nina Aero Club. But the pass is given away to TJ Reid. Heffernan fouling before TJ Reid could even pass the slipper. And the referee, correct call. And that's a pure sign of nerves from Barry Heffernan. You know, he's playing in his first final, never looked up and... He had to go back and foul him, then he had no option. TJ was heading in on the goals. Possibly got it. Did he get away with the yellow or did he get the yellow? The book was out, but I don't know if he got the yellow card. He'd be lucky. It's a soft free to give away, particularly when Tipperary had the possession. Hurler of the Year 2015, TJ Reid. Taps that over with ease. Three points for TJ Reid. Brian Cody reasonably pleased with the start. Pictures tell the story. We had sunshine about a half an hour ago. Now this is horrendous rain. Seamus Kennedy delivering a diagonal ball. Jamie Callan oh, beautifully flicked up. It's still there for the captain. Bearing down and goal. Inside the large rectangle. Yeah. The referee James Owen says his arm up. What is the decision? He's giving a free. Looks like it's going to be a free outside the large rectangle. I don't think he's going to give a penalty, Michael. Yeah, the foul is outside here, he's saying. Just watch it there. Foul happened outside. I thought he was in the square. I thought he was inside. Um, The ref had to call it there on the spot. Brilliant flick by Callan on the build-up to it. Beautiful. Unbelievable flick. Oh, look at the rain. It's absolutely spilling down now. Um, that'll be a big call. We'll have a look at it again after break. Just thought he's had one leg inside and he was fouled inside the square. Jason Ford with his first point. First free opportunity. Here Super again. Now here's Callan. He's inside. That's a penalty. That looks like a penalty when you look at the replay, but James Owen's decision was uh, quite clear, he was outside. Or did he give the free for the earlier? Foul outside, says the referee. The ball comes back out for his Dan McCormack. Available is Niall O'Mara. Floating one in again. Aiming for Shami Callan, or indeed John McGrath. Coming forward is Joey Holden. Pass goes astray, slippery ball, difficult conditions. Hugh Lawler over for his Killian Buckley. Quick hands again. Coming forward is John Donnelly, deep inside his own half of the field, aiming for Walter Watch. Stopped on this occasion as Tipperary go forward. It's Seamus Kennedy laying it off for his Dan McCormick. Pulls the brakes and gives it back. Carl Barrett, little shimmy, nice play by the corner back. Drops it into the Kilkenny half of the field. The Kilkenny are there in numbers. 
Look plenty of time for Paul Murphy to deliver a ball. A load of room in front of Callum Fenley. High ball into him. Ronan Maher attacks the ball. Brian Hogan has come off his line. Callum Fenley has no hurley. Slips out of the grasp of the goalkeeper. But the Tipperary, number one, does rather well. Ball comes out for Seamus Kennedy. Kennedy from Clanmel Commercials. Gives it up. Coming across is Porig Walsh. That's Kilkenny. Under a little bit of pressure, Paul Murphy flicking it back to his goalkeeper. Owen Murphy, no relation, laying it off. Paris Connor Fogarty, teacher down in Callan, aiming for Richie Hogan. Comes back again, good work on this occasion. Bursting forward is Boric Barr, and that's going to be a free for Tipperary. Uh, the conditions might dictate now, it's absolutely spilling down out of the heavens. Uh, the wet ball, and you know, the short passing game is going to come under pressure here because of the conditions. Joey Holden anticipating that the free was going to be taken quickly. Ball along the surface is going to be difficult. Good work by John Bubbles on the wire. Knocked away. Stalemate in the middle of the field. Connor Brown scooping it up. One of its given cup with UCC earlier. Richie Hogan always has the time. Sending this in towards Colin Finley and company. Finley gets a little touch. Coming forward is TJ Reid. He has it in his ball. Had it momentarily. Ball breaks free again. It's all a bit of a mad scramble. But it's exciting to watch. TJ Reid coming back. Man available is this man. It's Walter Walsh cutting inside. Inside the larger tangle. He can't turn and the referee has given a, a free air. The drama in the opening 11 and a half minutes of this All-Ireland final. Michael Kelly creating plenty of space. They've had a couple of half goal chances. Here's Walter Walsh. He's stood up there. There's a pull in the jersey uh, from Ro Ronda Maher. We believe that the referee has given the free for holding the hurley. And this is going to be another simple tap over score for TJ Reid. And Marty, I think people are going to be happy enough. You know, they haven't started hurling. Kilkenny have had a couple of goal chances. Um, they're dominating possession, and yet Tip will find themselves maybe three points down now. Not too bad considering the start they've had. Thirty-one-year-old from Ballyhale takes his points. Four points for TJ Reid. Richie Hogan, the other point scorer. Brian Cody. Every bit of shelter required. As Brian Hogan goes for distance. John Donnelly. Flicking it back. God chasing after this Nile Amara. Difficult conditions, I emphasize, for the players of Tipperary and Kilkenny. Yeah, well, John Donnelly did very well initially. That's what he does. They drop back himself and Walter Walsh for the puckouts and take up so many breaks. And Nile Amara put him under pressure there and got his body in between himself and Parik Walsh and was fouled. Well, believe it or not, we now have glorious sunshine in Dublin. It's that kind of a day. Jason Ford actually made his championship debut against Kilkenny six years ago. Now a teacher in the vocational school in Nina. Has been so consistent in this championship journey, scoring two goals and 57 points to the final. That's his second today. That is some rivalry, Marty. I was just reading during the week. Brendan Maher, it's his seventh all Ireland final today, including replays, and they've all been against Kilkenny, which is, is some stat, you know, so it just shows you. They're never too far away, these two counties. Tuck out from Owen Murphy. John Johnley goes up for it. Noel McGrath sweeps it back inside his own 20 metre line. Nice little touch. Barry Heffernan. Now at number three. We've been used to see him at number five and number seven for the blue and gold. John O'Dwyer. Killing all. Sweeping it across. Oh, great hands. Good hands indeed. There's an opportunity here. Good combination. As that goes to the wrong side of the post, off the stick of Seamus Kennedy, but a fine catch here by Michael Breen. Yeah, Michael Breen did very well. The problem with Seamus Kennedy was the shooter. You know, you need to get the ball into Noel McGrath, John McGrath, Callan, who can finish from there. Puck out dropping just inside the Tipperary 45-minute line. 
TJ Reid is in there, so too is Michael Breen. Colin Finlay comes in search of possession. Lays it off as Killian Buckley. Dropping this one in. And Brian Hogan will be happy to see it go out over the end line. And Kenny's second wide of the match. Uh, Killian Buckley has missed a lot of the season, you know, through injury and uh, big game for him today. Big, big call by Brian Cody to start him. Ronan Mars long delivery aimed at Jason Ford. Joey Holden with him. Good block down. Comes to John Donnelly. TJ Reid takes responsibility. Nice little pull of the brakes. Little one two with Killian Buckley. Hit a fair shoulder. Three Tipperary Premier lads chasing after him. But Kenny building slowly. Donnelly again is working hard. He's been impressive in the early stages. Diagonal ball was aimed at Richie Hogan. Richie is fouled. Dead straight in front of the post. Just outside the 45 metre line. Yeah, he's, a blow, he's after getting it across those wild watch Carl Barrett comes in very high there. Uh, very, very lucky again to escape a yellow card. He came in, that was reckless, just watch it there straight into the into the face guard. And that was slow, patient build up by Kilkenny. TJ Reid's so involved again with two or three passes and uh, Hogan draws the foul. Richie Hogan, this is his 49th championship appearance and his 10th All-Ireland final. Hurler of the Year 2014. And a great player, he has to go out now. The blood so brutal. So. Blood substitution required as uh, Billy Ryan comes on momentarily for Richie Hogan. Meanwhile, TJ Reid He's aiming to score his fifth point of the game. All of them from freeze. Yeah, Kilkenny one point from play, Richie Hogan and Michael Breen the only scorer from tip from play with two frees from forward. None of the forward, it's only one of the 12 forwards to score from play. Strange game so far. Again, Brian Hogan goes short, first called Barrett, Seamus Kennedy. Poor pass. Not for the first time we've seen it. Opportunity for Adrian Mullen. Gives it back first, Walter Walsh. A little shimmy to the right. Thought about going for the point. Now he's in a better angle, but he miscues. Disappointment for a big Walter. Yeah, tip in trouble with their puck out strategy. Now the short ones aren't working. Kilkenny are closing them down very quickly. The puck it long, they're not winning them. Uh, so they're going to have to find some way. The Kilkenny forward is tackling very hard. Looking very hard for them with no option here again. That's a dangerous ball out to, to Mar. Well controlled. Cody Mar. 30 years of age from Thurlis Sarsfields, scooping it forward to Shami Callan, but TJ Reid is back there, helping out his defence. It's a good ball up for his John Donnelly. Hit it in high, it's a waste in some ways, and there goes Brian Hogan. We saw that against Wexford, do you remember Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Hawkeye was called in, but not today. No Hawkeye called today, six foot five. I believe that Hawkeye are checking it out. We continue on with the play. Back first, Paddy Deegan scoops it up high. And the referee has blown the whistle because Hawkeye have contacted James Owens and they're going to consult Hawkeye. But I think the information is that John Donnelly's shot went over the bar. Well, they must have because they wouldn't contact him otherwise. Yep. Let's double check Hawkeye. It's a talk. Amazing, Lightning, second Lightning time. Has struck twice, that's bizarre to say the least. Brilliant take by Hogan, just shows you the importance of this technology. If this all earned is one by a point, that's how crucial it is. Hogan goes for distance, down to Shemi Callan. Picked up by Paul Murphy from Danesport. Pulled up, superbly, by Killian Buckley. Oh, he's so brave. Good work by Ronan Ma. Hits the shoulder. And the block. And the hooking. And it's number 31. It's Richie. Scooping the ball inside. And that is gone wide. For Kilkenny, all the qualities we expect from Kilkenny. The hooking, the blocking, the work rate. It is here. It is here. At their, a great start by them. Killian Buckley has said a brilliant bravery. TJ on the ball, Richie Hogan, all the key men. And Tip has said it a couple of times, struggling to win these puckouts. Brian Hogan 
for Cody Gunnering for Nyla Mara. But Kilkenny's half back line is rock solid. Connor Fogarty charging out. Passion. He wants this All Ireland medal. Kenny leading by four points. Almost 20 minutes gone in the first half. And right now, Michael Dagnan, you'd have to say Kilkenny looked to be the better team. Well, by far the better team. The scoreline, as I said, they could have had a goal, maybe two goals. Um, they seem to find these players all the time. Conor Brown here, what a start he's had in the game. You know, tough, honest, uh, winning all those breaking balls. And Tipperary are looking out there, looking for leaders in their half forward in the middle of the field now to get on the ball and win some possession. They've been starved of, of any ball at the moment. TJ Reid. Seven All Ireland medals already won. Driving this in. And the umpire will go for the white flag. Six out of six. And here's John Donnelly. Now, this is the one. And watch the athleticism of Hogan here. He goes, fierce height, and catches it behind the bar. Great catch, but great score by Donnelly, as it turns out. Thomas down. Where John Donnelly is from will be well pleased. Oh, beautiful stick work by John Donnelly. TJ Reid. Cross towards Richie Holden. Carl Barrett comes charging out. Fair and square. Walter Watch. Good work by Seamus Kennedy. Sticking to his job. Sticking to his task. And perhaps being a little bit over enthusiastic after doing a good job. Sideline ball for TJ Reid. Brian Cody, 65 years of age, on the 12th of July last. Poor ball from TJ Reid. Barry Heffernan gives it to Polly Marr. And Kenny are putting in the hard work. Maher lays it off. John McGuire back for his party. Maher again. Paddy Deegan chasing. Maher has to give it back to Kenny. Putting in the hard work. Comes out for his Nyla Maher. Turns and does it have the legs? Does it have the accuracy? It's blocked down for a 65. Yeah, Tipper, they're looking for inspiration. You know, somewhere out there. They need somebody to step up. They're playing four across the half forward line. They're poking the ball out. It's been broken down. Kilkenny are winning every breaking ball. And somebody has to start reading that from a temporary point of view. Kilkenny are given exactly what we expect 100% commitment from everybody. Uh, the conditions have definitely had a bearing. You know, some bad wides that we wouldn't normally see. Hurls very, very slippy. You see the towels coming in the whole time into the players. Uh, so, subdued enough start. Kilkenny be delighted to be five ahead. It's a good lead. Normally in hurling five points is very little and a day like today when it's not going to be high scoring by the looks of things it's a big lead. Jason Ford going to take this 65. Silver Mines man has really been razor sharp all through this championship journey. On Aaron in his free taking. Great strike, very important score from Jason Ford. Owen Murphy. 29 years of age since the 6th of August. What a fantastic catch by Richie Hogan. Noel McGrath. Laying it off. Brendan Maher. Captain of an All-Ireland winning team a few years ago. Referee blows his whistle. And when Tipperary run at the Kilkenny defence, they find that rather difficult to deal with, Michael. Yeah, well, that was very, very clever play by Brendan Murray. He had nowhere to go. There was three Kilkenny players around him. And he just, just watched that for cute. He flicked it over, knew the tackle was going to come in. For, so he, he drew the free there. That's all his experience coming into play there. Good play by Brendan Maher. Young Hurler of the Year, nine years ago, twice an All-Star. Now 30 years of age, as we look at Jason Ford. Well within his range. White flag raised again. 
If TJ Reid can do it at one end, Jason Ford can do it at the other. A few answer men here today as well. Owen Murphy aiming for Big Walter, but it's Paddy Maher that leaps up into the sky, lays it off. Farris, Seamus Kennedy, 50-50 ball, comes back, Jason Ford laying the ball inside. Good work there by Nilo Maher, he's never scored a goal until now! Brilliant goal! What a smashing effort! The Kilroy and McDonough man rattles it into the back of the Kilkenny nets. That's a brilliant catch by Toddy Marr in the build-up. But look at Nilo Marr here, little flick, one-two there, beautiful ball. And watch the feet here, watch the footwork. He completely bamboozled uh, Paddy Deegan, a rasper into the corner there. What a goal, and that game badly needed this. Back out into the live action. It's Barry Heffernan laying it off as John McGrath. Giving it back to Big Brother, No, Shipping it into the corners where Shami Callanan is making a run. With him is Hugh Lawler. Callanan crosses it. It's a good ball. Jason Ford blocked away by Owen Murphy. But suddenly the momentum is swinging to Munster and to the Premier County of Tipperary. Yeah, look, I just said a couple of minutes ago, five points a big lead today, it's gone. And we talked about leaders for tip on the field. Toddy Maher stepped up with a brilliant catch there. Uh, the two McGraths there showing their class. And uh, Seamus Kennedy and Walter Watch, some great battles going on. But tip right back in this now. That goal was badly needed. It's after livening up the whole crowd. 65. Second of the afternoon for Tipperary, going to be taken by Jason Ford. Four points to his credit so far, including the previous 65. Here he comes. He is such an easy stroke of the ball. And that's over the bar. Yeah, Marty's having a great season. He waited here, but here's the goal again, O'Mara. But look at the low ball on a wet day. It, it bounced a long way out, and Owen Murphy Mur would probably be a little bit disappointed within under Hugh Lawler. Watch him, he steps out, hits the ground. No chance, really. And a rasper on the ground, it skidded off the ground straight into the net. And let's be honest, Owen Murphy is the best goalkeeper in Ireland at the moment. Here comes Paddy Deegan. Trying to flick it back up into the hurling. Laying it back. Paris. Torig watch. Nicely picked up by John Donnelly. Referee correctly blows the whistle for an infringement. And I have to say, John Donnelly is playing well. Yeah, he's very good at reading the break. Very intelligent hurler, and he uses the ball really well. I think we'll, if you just watch here, he's just always watching the break. He's in around it all the time. Pulled down there by Seamus Kennedy. The ref's book is out again. No booking so far. You know, I think again that was. Cynical enough, he knew there was danger there and he, and he just got a little hand to him and dragged him down. Just on the edge of the D. Going for point, if a shot. Follows through beautifully. Seven points. This is something I've noted during the year, Marty. In the first half against Tip seemed to give way an awful lot of freeze. Even go back to the first game against Cork, Patrick Harbin scored eight in the first half alone. Um, whether it's just don't, they don't want to, they want to stop the momentum of the toes and attackers and in the second half they usually don't give away half as many. Sides are level for the second time. Killian Buckley laying it off quickly. Aiming for Colin Fennelly. Or Richie Hogan. He'll take Colin Fennelly. Oh, hefty shoulder. Still going forward, Colin Fennelly. Blocked out. Ronan Mara comes out. It's the passion. An intensity of an All-Ireland hurling final. John bubbles on the wire, dropping it in. Nobody really home. Paul Murphy sends it back into Tipperary territory. TJ Reid going up for it. Ball stuck. One back by Noel McGrath. Short little ball for us. John O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer has the time and the composure. And he really, knowing John O'Dwyer and the standard that he normally plays up. He'll be disappointed. He'll be disappointed. He, sometimes you can have an awful lot of time, too much time in the ball, and he certainly had there. And here's the puck out coming again. No time for hanging the ball. Oh, fantastic catch. And can it follow through? Brilliant. 
Absolutely brilliant play by John Donnelly. He's a student teacher in DCU. He's only 21 years of age. But right now, this first half, he's very impressive. Yeah, Bassett, and that's what we talk about in the Ireland finals. Players always that you're not expecting, like Niall O'Mara's got a goal, Donnelly with a couple of points. All they talk about TJ and Shane McCallum, they'll do their bit as well, but it's a team game and Donnelly's had a mighty start. John O'Dwyer. Paul Murphy. Gavitz. John McGuire comes in to challenge. Murphy gets his clearance in. And Tipperary regained the possession. The crowd of the Davin and love it. And so too, the Seamus Kennedy. Yeah, and he had a chance over here, this side of the field, a few minutes ago. He missed it, but he had the confidence to come back up the field. Great athlete, Kennedy, and that's a super score into the wind. A dual star with his club, Carmel Commercials. That's his first point in the championship. TJ Reid. Has the slither momentarily. Michael Green is in there. Noel McGrath has arrived, looking around, about to be challenged by Killian Buckley. The hook didn't quite work. It turned out to be a trip, and that's going to be a free for the Lockmore Castellani man. Noel McGrath indicating, come on, lads, spread it wide. And Don't be going down the middle. Only two inside in the full forward lane and two on two. Noel McGrath dropping it in. Ball breaks. Kindly. For John McGrath, and that is over the bar. We just watch McGrath here again. We talk about hurling brains. Just watch it. He he knows it's going to break. He just backed away, picked it up, and then took the tackle to make a bit of room. It's a good shoulder and over the bar. That's a very very good score. Very clever hurling by McGrath. Man that made his debut against Cork in 2016. Won an All Star, an All Ireland minor football winner in 2011, hurling 2012, and that's a hefty challenge. The referee is walking across. That is related, perhaps, to a previous clash. Let's just watch it here. Mitchie Hogan, just a little bit high on Carl Barrett. Yeah, he came in to, he came in to hit him a shoulder, and Barrett, if you just watch Carl Barrett, he ducks out of the tackle. That's an elbow strength in the head. It all depends what the referee saw or what he's been told by the linesman here. Linesmen today are Johnny Murphy from Limerick and Paul O'Dwyer from Carlo. You can see there's a little bit of blood on Richie's nose from an earlier clash. Imagine he's going to give him a yellow card, by the way. That's what the body language would suggest, anyway, Michael. He's double checking that the right corner back. Well, from... the, the, the trouble the referee has here, if he thinks it's a deliberate shoulder to the head, it's a red card. That's the rule. Um, so, you know... Let's see I'm, what the colour of the card will be, Michael. I'd be taking the conditions into account a little bit. Very slippy down there. He was coming in wholeheartedly, but... He's indicating there's a high challenge. And the referee is showing red. <laughs> Richie Hogan cannot believe it. Kilkenny are incensed and Brian Cody as the Cats are reduced to 14 players after 33 minutes of the first half. Sensational development, heartbreaking for Richie Hogan, but it was high. It was high, but I, I think on a wet day like today, he didn't you know, deliberately go in to do him, and a yellow card to me would have done. Sideline ball. Ball again out over the line. Jamie Callan and Paddy Deegan getting involved. That was the incident. Well, as I said, if the ref thought it was deliberate, he had to send them off. That's the rule. We've seen a few lads getting away with it during the year. We've seen a few lads getting punished for it, so it's a little bit inconsistent. The reality is that any contact with the head is now going to be a red card. Well, we saw Rona Maher against Limerick going over the top into, into Peter Casey, and he didn't get any card, so... Here comes Paddy Deegan. Going for distance, aiming for Colin Fennelly. He's underneath it. Coming forward, Adrian Muller. Referee. This says play on. I don't think he's blown his whistle. And now he's given a free to Kilkenny. The Kilkenny fans and supporters are a little bit incensed with that previous decision. They felt that Colin Fennelly was fouled here. They were waiting for the free to be given, but there was no free coming. 
Yeah, they got it eventually, and the rain's spilling down again. But you know, freezer hard. Got James Old tried to let the game flow, and in conditions like this, you know, you're going to get you're going to get 50-50 calls, and that's a, that's what I would have I would have felt on that. You know, maybe it's a red card under the rule, but in, on a day like today, um, I think you have to take the conditions into account, and this is going to level it up anyway. And we've seen. We've talked about it many, many times. The 14 men generally find a way to beat the 15 men. I don't know what it is in sport. TJ Reid going for his eighth point of the match. This the level matters again for the fourth occasion. This is the collision with Adrian Mullen that was just previous. Yeah, he came down awkwardly. He's limping heavily there now, Adrian Mullen. Two minutes of additional time in this first half. Sunshine gone. Back to the heavy showers. Gone forward is Dan McCormack. Trying to sneak this inside the post, but it's gone wide. And that is Tipperary's fourth wide. And to be honest with you, Michael, was well within his range yeah, normally. Dan McCormack's striking is his weak link. You know, even when he got that ball, he should have burst on with it. He stalled straight away, didn't want to take the shot. And uh, no confidence in his striking put it wide. Owen Murphy goes for that long ball. Barry Heffernan catching gracefully ahead of Walter Walsh, which is quite an achievement. Nipping in is Dan McCormack. Jamie Callan into his right. The referee blows his whistle. He's giving a free to Tipperary for the foul on Dan McCormack. This was the incident that was holding there clearly oh, by Joey Holden. Free, yeah. Clear free. Well, the talking point, no doubt, will be the sending off of Richie Hogan in the first half. Kilkenny reduced down to 14 players in the last three minutes. Disappointment for Richie Hogan. Talking point for everybody. You know, and he, he's going to be massively disappointed. He put so much into the game coming back from injuries. But, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be thinking there, why did I come charging in as well? You know, you have to take responsibility for your actions. Barrett flicked back, but he was coming, flying to hit him a good dunt. They had clashed earlier on in the game. That was in the back of his head as well. He got the blood injury from the foul from Barrett. So, you know, that all plays in your mind. So he'd be saying, why didn't he just stay out of it? And I'd be still on the field. Tapped over the bar. Simple point for Noel McGrath. Getting his first point. Liam Sheedy encouraging, as always, from the sideline. Owen Murphy... Pucks the ball out. The booing is coming from the Kilkenny supporters who feel that they've been numerically disadvantaged with that decision by the referee James Owens. For Liam Sheedy, he's encouraging his players as they go into the break. James Owens heads towards the Muhammad Ali tunnel between the Davin and the Cusick because no doubt any time there is somebody sent off, particularly in All-Ireland Final, it is very much a talking point. They've been level four times in the first half. A goal by Niall O'Mara, 25 minutes, the only goal of the first half. Half-time, it's Kilkenny, 11 points. Tipperary, 1-9. Analysis right after the break. this All-Ireland Hurling Final we talked about what you would do when things go wrong well things have now gone for, wrong for Kilkenny because they've lost Richie Hogan to a red card but they are only trailing Tipperary by a single point at the break 1-9 to 11 points let's get straight to that because that could end up being crucial to this whole match a red card for Richie Hogan yeah, so I, I know Richie well. He is not a good tackler, I would say that at the outset. And this wasn't a good tackle, Joanne. So, you know, I think Kenny were coming in a bit of pressure, caught the barrels out in front of him. Now, the problem here is that Richie, you know, went with his arm a little bit. My initial reaction watching it live was that it wasn't. It was dangerous play, maybe a yellow card. I didn't think it was a red card. And I said, I think he was unlucky in the sense that his arm kind of strike Carl Barrett's I, 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 I just think that, Henry, the last angle was the one for me. I wasn't well, this, sure. This one is not like good. That, 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 that's Anthony. elbow to face, though. You, whatever you say about it, and he's coming at steam pace. And he did I, 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 I think that angle it does, you know, it's very dangerous play, right? Mm -hmm. But I think 
at the moment of time, the linesman is looking at, the referee is looking at. I think it's a harsh call, Anthony, being honest about it. But I, look, I did two till I saw I, the last I, I, angle. Yeah, I have to say. Yeah. The rules are there for very dangerous play. That's that's a sending off. It's a red card. It's elbow to, to head. That's why the rules. I wouldn't are there. say it was elbow. I wouldn't say it's elbow. I know. I know what you're saying. You're trying to say, but I don't think he went like that and hit him. But at the bit. start of the year, they made it very clear that any tackle on the head was going to result in a red card. And James Owens did go over and he consulted his linesman Johnny Murphy, and he said to him, "If it's a strike to the head, we've no choice." Yeah. Well, I don't think he struck him in the head. I think you know. I think his arm struck him in the head, and I think this part of the arm, I'd have no obligations if it was this part. But I, look, that's me maybe being a bit. I think it was the speed yeah. and the power he was coming at. And it was very hard for him with the wet surface trying to change his feet as well. Yeah, well, give it, was, that, it wasn't a good touch. Just that anyway. fourth yeah. angle was yeah. just for me. It was a severe one, and Barrett hit the deck very hard. I thought, you know, it was the first yeah. instinct watching it in general play and then we, we have the benefit of the replay outside. Well, we know Kilkenny had this great start, but the goals seem to make a big difference. And you turned around and said, this is a mad game. Well, I've said it for, for years and uh, Paddy Maher started it with a massive catch and a good ball upfield by Shemi Kennedy. And just a breaking ball, if they did more of this, I think Jason Ford just sucked him in and you've got to give massive credit to Nilo Maher. Though. He turned Conor Fogarty literally inside out, got onto his good, strong left-hand side and buried to the far corner. A great, great finish, I thought. Brilliant finish, Anthony. Like from a goalkeeping point of view, you might have thought that he'd actually come back across, especially like you said, on the, on the strong side, and really use the surface. So there's so much rain falling out there that a ball you'd actually think it nearly gathers speed when it hits off the ground, but it's really hard for the keeper to stop it because you can't be sure where it's going to go. It was a fantastic finish. And for any viewers, I think the conditions have been atrocious out there, you know. So and Kilkenny were well on top to one for that first 20 minutes. To be fair to Limerick, uh, sorry to Tipperary, they moved Porrick Mar across from Walter. Mar, Walter Welch, that has made a bit of a difference. Brendan Maher and Porrick Maher drove up the field just before that. They needed the leaders to stand up, they won two frees, mm. and then Porrick Maher had a great catch for that goal. Now we did expect it to be finally poisoned heading into the second half. Tipperary are a point and a man up. We'll have the second half coming up after a break and our competition. We've teamed up with Aer Lingus, Ireland's only four-star airline, now flying to 14 North America destinations to give you the chance to win a five-night holiday to New York. I'm here in Gaelic Park, New York. Let's take a look around the Big Apple. Go. First stop, Central Park. Giddy up. Sometimes you even forget you're in New York, but then... Come on! You might even meet some GA fans. You and a friend will be treated to a five-night stay in Fitzpatrick's Hotel in Manhattan, close to all the attractions. You'll need some dollars to do some shopping. So for your chance to win a five-night holiday to New York at $5,000 spending money, just answer this. Which of these is a much-loved shopping district in New York? Bond Street, Grafton Street, or Fifth Avenue? To enter, call 15 17 71 71 82 or text the word GAME, followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost two euro and three cents. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, September 16th. Full details are on rt.ie forward slash competitions, but the lucky winner will also be revealed. Plenty of special guests to look back on another intriguing season of Championship Hurling and as well as the All-Ireland Final. That's with Des tonight from half past nine. So 1-9 to 11 points to Tipperary at half time. We have heard so much about Kilkenny's work rate. What did you make of it in the first half and what else did they bring to the game? Well, Graham McCaughey was sitting out here from Limerick and he said the exact same thing about there's a very similar first 20 minute pattern to the Kilkenny game. And here is Hugh Lawler coming up the field, this is very early doors. John McGrath actually started wing forward. He ends up marking Walter Welch wing back. Tipper a little bit all over the place, but it was Kilkenny's work rate. Great chance for Colin Fenley here. And John McGrath, to be fair, got back and got a block, you know, so they'll be talking about that one if they happen to win it. But here's Kilkenny again, TJ using the ball very well. Colin Fenley throwing it around. John Donnelly again had a big impact on the game. Just the precision of him, just working the ball through the lines, and here they win a free. And TJ obviously has got eight points from freeze. 
Yeah, like you know, and a feature of it, Joanne, is how deep TJ has been willing to come. Obviously, maybe not wanting to engage so much with Brendan Maher. And Brendan's a bit of a quandary whether he comes or not. But if TJ picks up ball anywhere in the field, as we've seen here, you now someone might get Brian Hogan to get to block those balls rather than catching them going over the bar. <laughs> this uh, is, that's another one. And we're Joanne, waiting for it. We were talking about a ball, sir. John Donnelly has had a massive impact for Kilkenny, to be fair. Two points from play. We've only had three scores in the first half. TJ's got eight frees. Richie Hogan got a point from play and John Donnelly's gone. That's a bit of a concern for Kenny now with only five forwards. And when it was 8 3, it actually could have been about 11 3. Like I, I Walter had an awful wide, Paddy yeah. Deegan had an awful wide. Colin wife. could have got, got it. Like, people were hanging in at that yeah. stage. To support what the boys are saying there, it was like, after 21 minutes, uh, Tipperary had turned over 72% of their possession. Yeah. Like, that tells its own story. Yeah. That's a huge, yeah. a huge, huge number. And the goal came in the 25th minute, it was vital in terms of turning the tide. How do Tipperary use the extra man in this second half? Because we saw how it worked against Wexford in the semi final. Yeah, for me, it's Barry Heffernan. You get it to Barry Heffernan. He plays midfield, he plays half back. You try and get him in because I, I, he wasn't so comfortable early in the game in the corner. I think if you could get Barry Heffernan into that advanced position, we yeah. saw him coming up the field against Wexford, popping passes. You know, and that's 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 what we're going to need to do. It, it is using the ball a lot better, I think. And, and Tipperary will have to try and do that. Okay, and don't forget that there is Irish language commentary in RT News now, but it's back to Michael and Marty. Thank you very much, Joanne. Welcome back to the second half. Well, it's a bizarre sort of a day in terms of the climate. We've had sunshine, heavy, heavy rain. So much so we now have the floodlights on in Croke Park for this All-Ireland Hurling Final. And if you think people have left at the lower tier of the Cusick stand, they haven't. They've just gone for a bit of shelter. Meanwhile, Brian Cody with James McGarry and Derek Lane. We've seen it in the past, as Michael mentioned in the first half commentary. Teams down to 14 players, how they respond. Tipperary did it themselves in the All-Ireland semi-final. Can, can, can Kilkenny do it in this one? TJ Reid, eight first half points. All of them frees. Follows through, as always. That's his ninth. Yeah, and if Tipper going to win this, they're going to have to improve their discipline. That's nine frees. Like, can anybody really score three from play? John Donnelly, again, that man we talked about in the first half, won that free brilliantly, got in on the breaking ball and forced a free. And it looks like um, Cahill Barrett's going to be the loose man. He's uh, sitting in front of the full battle. Five times they've now been level. But Tipperary have an extra man. Conor Fogarty driving it into Kilkenny territory. Coming across is Carl Barrett. Holy Cross, Bally Cahillman. John O'Dwyer laying it back, picked up by Torrig Walsh into the space. Carl Barrett has come back there. Here comes Colin Fennelly. Barry Heffernan gives it back to his keeper, Brian Hogan. Potimar. Driving it in again into Kilkenny territory. Lovely little flick up by Jason Ford. Gives it inside to John McGrath. Half block. Here comes Sherry Callaghan. Goal for Tipperary. A goal in every single game. This is his eighth goal of the championship. Scoring a remarkable, remarkable 7 16 on the way. Now it's 8 16. Scoreless in the first half. He gets the vital touch. Yeah, that's a brilliant control by John McGrath coming through here. Got the shot away, blocked brilliantly by Murphy. But Callan on hand, brave, slid in there. And what a record um, this year he's had. A goal in every championship, Mar Marty, as you say. And that could be a huge, huge score in the context of this uh, second half. Start of the second half is normally the period that Kilkenny come tearing out. Particularly we saw in the All-Ireland semi-final against Limerick. The pressure is on. Good ball inside from Killian Buckley. Tipperary, blue and goals are back there, Polly Maher again laying it off, hefty shoulder and Noel McGrath, but it's the Kilkenny man that hits the deck, McGrath giving it in, but it's a poor pass, Conor Fogarty is in there, two against one good ball for us John O'Dwyer, O'Dwyer goes for the diagonal ball over towards the captain from Dominic, Shami Callanan goal, just a few moments ago that's a goal and a point showing tremendous leadership, Shami Callanan well, that's a great ball by Bubbles. Now. He saw that there was a couple of short passes on, but he saw the room in front of, of Callan and he sprayed a 70 yard pass straight in front of him and made it easy for him. Look, Tip really making good use of this extra man in the, at the start of the second half. Attacking the slither is Brendan Maher. 
from Boris Ali. Sending it down to Shami Kalna. Jason Ford is arriving. Nice rob by Paul Murphy. Drives it into the centre towards Killian Buckley. Trying to get past the initial challenge. Carl Barrett is back there in front of Colin Fennelly. The reality is Kilkenny are going to have to run at the Tipperary defence because the long ball is not going to work. John O'Dwyer was stumbling into this Cusick stand and yet managed to score a magnificent point. That's Beautiful sort, balance. That's the sort of ability this Tipperary forward line have. You know, we've just seen it in the last few minutes. Callan, uh, John McGrath with his touches and then uh, Bubbles then with that brilliant point on the move. Coming on is Billy Ryan and the player that's going off is Adrian Muller. Yeah, he got a bad knock just before half time, and Billy Ryan's pace, you know, badly needed, I think. Now, this can any forward, and as you say, Martin, we're going to have to run at tip because Barrett's sitting back there winning loads of ball. And every ball is like a magnet, he's attracting it at the moment because he is that extra man. Joey Holden, captain of the Kilkenny team, the one in All Ireland in 2015. He's on his own. Paddy Deegan arrives from Kilkenny City, from O'Loughlin Gales. Goes again for Colin Fennelly. Knocked away. Kilkenny just might create something here. Back outside first Walter Walsh! And that's gone over the bar. That wasn't that far away. But that was brilliant play by Joey Holden back in the cornerback position. He was under unbelievable pressure. You see Walter just going there. He, Kept it maybe just around the crossbar. He was heading, heading for the crossbar, but he went over the bar. Great play by Holden back in the corner and Paddy Deegan with a good long first time ball. Walter Walsh's first point in this All Ireland final. Sideline ball. Brian Cody. This would be his greatest achievement because he's building a, a new side, but they're numerically disadvantaged. Sideline ball is poorly taken. John Donnelly had a fine first half. Aiming for Colin Fennelly. Knocked away. Ronan Mark. Good combination play by Seamus Kennedy. Plays with St Mary's. And Carmel and the Hurling. The commercials are the football brotherhood. But Kennedy is a dual star, whether it's Gaelic football or hurling. Well, that's a brilliant score. John McGrath picks him up off the shoulder, and Kennedy's look at his ease from the middle of the field. That's his second uh, fantastic point so far in the game. Tuck out his end at Walter Walsh. Little flick back by Noel McGrath. Little shimmy by Barry Heffernan. Diagonal ball is in and Jamie Callanan. Hugh Laura with it. Callanan. Trying to get an angle, sending a ball in! Brilliant! John Edouard! Bubbles is his name, scoring is his game. Held scoreless in the first half. The vision of the captain saw that John Edouard was unmarked here. Nobody home for Kilkenny and he stroked it up. Yeah, look at the numerical advantage really tell him. When you're playing a team with the class of tips forwards and they're getting that room in front of Callan and it's just... Brilliant to watch the, the way he, he sprayed that ball across. He's totally selfless. He could have went for his own score. And here he is on with Hugh Lawler, very inexperienced at this level. Here's Callan again on the ball. And Hugh Lawler has lost his hurley. Seamus Callan almost got clean possession. Connor Fogarty arrived to lay it off first. Killian Buckley. Cross field, knocked away. Dan McCormick lays it back first. Noel McGrath. Cut out on this occasion by Conor Fogarty. Over first, Paddy Deegan. They're aiming again for Colin Fennelly. Fennelly is underneath it. Carl Barrett is there, sweeping up. I just don't think, Michael, that long ball is going to work. No, Ronan Mark, very, very strong in the air. You know, I thought he'd be a big loss to the half-back line, but he's doing a great job back there on Colin Fennelly so far. Hugh Lawler. To John Donnelly. Score two points in the first half, he's going for a third. Brian Hogan cleverly this time uses his Hurley to bat it down, whereas the turn of Sarsfield's cornerback, Ronan Maher. Paddy Deegan gets a touch. 
then gathers it cleanly. Ball to hand to, for John Donnelly. To Conor Fogarty. TJ Reid is the target. Somehow he got it. Can they create something out of this? Unequivocally, the answer is yes. It's his first point from play and his tenth overall. Yeah, and the only thing you're going to be sure is that Kenny will not give up. And that, you know, great take there by TJ Reid. But here's Callan. Just looking to look up here. Brilliant ball. Brilliant first touch and fantastic finish by John Edward. He has the wrists and the hands and makes it, makes it look so easy. Brian Hogan's puck out. All the way down for us, John McGrath. And that is sailing spectacularly between the posts and over the bar. Yeah, and he's had a quiet enough year by his standards, sent off in the semi final. But the first touch there and the quick feet, he's not the fastest uh, runner, but the quickness of his feet to make room for himself there and flick it over the bar. Brilliant score. Kilkenny are in deep, deep trouble here. Paul Barrett is in there. Walter Walsh is trying to get it out. TJ Reid lays it back first. Killian Buckley. Nice ball inside. Connor Brown makes the space. Brian Hogan deals with it capably. Seamus Kennedy. Down towards Connor Fogarty. And here comes the goal scorer from the first half. Myla Mara with a buck ball is well wide. Kilroy and McDonough, club that produced so many stars, including Len Gaynor in the past. James McGarry and Brian Cody having a brief conversation. Changes in tactics, a fantastic catch once again by Barry Heffernan. Michael Breen scored a point in the first half. Lays it off first, Noel McGuire has the time to steady, shoot and score. One from a free, one from play. Tipperary fans are happy. And he just makes it look so easy. You know, there was a few runners off the ball. Dan McCorrick made room for him, but he just knew exactly where he was, the time he had, the space on the ball, and a uh, class player when he gets that sort of room. Three clear goals between the teams now. John McGrath. Oh, good play, Hugh Lawler. Paddy Deegan. Nice little hook by Jamie Callanan. I think it was more than a shoulder. The linesman, Johnny Murphy, agreeing with the referee's decision. The referee, James Owens, had already given a free. Story of the first half, the story perhaps of this All-Ireland final, the sending off of Richie Hogan after 33 minutes. Tipperary have now scored two goals and five points all from play in the second half. Kilkenny have only just responded with three, but they are playing, as you know, with 14. TJ Reid going for his 11th point. Just a few metres outside his own 65 metre line. Spot on. Excellent play. Yeah, that's a great free. And back to Richie Hogan, he's sitting there, you know, as I said before half time, he's saying, Why did I do it? You know, it was, it was reckless, it was, it was silly. I was allowed for the conditions a bit, but he came with the elbow up and uh, ended up on the line. And, you know, it really has changed the game. Uh, Tipperary just getting that extra space out there. Barrett picking up everything at the back, and their forwards really getting that little more time on the ball. Richie Lahey is coming on from uh, Rowan Estig instead of Killian Buckley as the ball drops down. This is Billy Ryan, has been very impressive in the championship of 2019 whenever he got a chance. And he got an opportunity here when he puts it between the posts and over the bar. Good play. Yeah, he's a very good player, this Billy Ryan. He's great pace and, you know, you see it there, Tipperary left that. One lad left to another lad, Barry Heffernan tipped it down. Ryan was on the break and over the bar. Connor Fogarty. Trying to gather it up. Al O'Mara, Dan McCormick are in there for Tipperary. It's a bit of a struggle. Billy Ryan is there. Bobbling all over the place. Noel McGrath. Into the space for John O'Dwyer to chase after it. Joey Holden with it. Oh, what trickery. Magic. In for Jason Ford and over the bar. Beautifully created, sensationally finished 
It's Tipperary rocking and rolling to their 28th All Ireland title. Marty, it's unbelievable that you know the hands. But Noel McGrath's vision before that to pick him out. He saw him running. He picked him out. Look, a lovely little touch and unselfish again. I think that's something that this tip forward line they're, they're giving to the man the best position all the time, and it's very hard to defend against that. Carl Barrett over first. Dan McCormack. Boris Ali, secondary school teacher in Carrigan Shore. Kenny under severe pressure. Ends up with Paddy Deegan. And aiming again for Colin Fennelly. But to be honest, it's a waste of possession by Kilkenny. They are going to have to run at it. The tactics are wrong. Comes first Noel McGrath. Corey Walsh gets a touch. Good work again by Hugh Lawler. Where is Paddy Deegan? John Donnelly calling for it. Three against... Two, four against two as I look at it. Comes out first, Noel McGrath. Barry Heffernan. Seamus Kennedy. He's played well at left half back. Nile O'Mara. Nice wrist. Jason Ford. Back to Seamus Kennedy once more as the ball is floated in from out the middle of the field and that ball is wide. Master Prairie six wide of the game off the stick of Potty Bar. Yeah, I don't think Liam Sheedy's going to be too happy, you know, going for the lot of short pass and fancy flicks around. There's a long way to go in this game yet. Uh, they have a lovely lead, and he just wanted to put Kilkenny away if they can and not to be messing with possession. Go, go, go. John Donnelly. Vinnie Ryan is inside. Quality ball. Going through is Richie Lai. Losing the possession. Good marking by Tipperary. Ball comes loose. It's still available. Tipperary were a little bit hesitant inside their own large rectangle. And Barry Heffernan lays it off. And Tipperary relieved the pressure. An effort that is simply sublime. Jason Ford, class, absolute class. Yeah, looking at it after, Kilkenny had a half a chance there, could have broken onto it there, Richie Lahey. But just the class to have. Here we are here. Ball left in there. With loads of defenders there. If you look around, Joe, uh, Tipperary, look, you have to say they've also upped their game. It's not just down to the 14 men. The second half, they've come out completely different team than they were in the first half. Tony Maher, brilliant catch. Niall O'Mara, the goal scorer. First half has gone off. Mark Hill is on. It's that ball. It's sent wide. Owen Murphy aims for John Donnelly. Noel McGrath. That was Dan McCormack. That carries a little bit too much pace. Owen Murphy to Connor Fogarty. Dropping it in again around the house. Brilliant catch. Ronan Maher to the brother party. Up towards. John of the wire, Joey Holden should get there first. Laying it back for his own Murphy. The keeper looks around at options. He goes for that long delivery. TJ Reid is at the edge of the square. He's claiming he was fouled. Ronan Maher comes out. Drives it down the middle. John McGrath comes in search of possession. Two against two here, and batted away on this occasion. John Donnelly from way out the field. That's a great point. His third of the match. Yeah, and Marty, look, a long stretch of play there with the ball going up and down the field. But the one thing you'd be sure of with Kenny, they're not going to pack it in. They keep battling for every ball. But uh, Tipperary, just in this second, I'll just watch this here. Was this a foul, Michael? No, he went to ground. He wasn't fouled, uh, in my view. And uh, the high ball, Marty, you mentioned a few times, not working. Ronan Maher giving a brilliant display at full back, catching balls, breaking them. He's not going to be beaten in the air. Carl Barrett delivers a long ball, gathered by Paul Murphy. He's taken out by Jason Ford. And the referee will surely have a word with the corner forward from Silvermines. Now, this is interesting. You can hear 82,300 in Croke Park give vent to their feelings 
Liam Sheedy is a little bit concerned. It's a yellow card for Jason Ford. You watch it here, O Murphy. The arm is up. To get, it's, not, it's not aggressive. You know, just watch it here. The arm is just up, not as aggressive. I think the yellow card to right Calder. James Marr is on for Kilkenny. Conor Brown is the player that's gone off. Seamus Kennedy has the composure to see that John McGuire was available. Good ball over towards Mark Hill. This is a really talented hurler. 20 and it towards the 13. And the referee has blown his whistle and he's given a free. Yeah, very direct play there by Mark Hill. Very good player, as you say. Just watch there, probably just fouled there when he was going through. If you could see inside, if you, hand pass, James Callan was loose inside. Didn't see him, uh, but the free one in, in any event. He was on the UCC team that won the Fitzgibbon earlier this year. Mark Hill from Sheelan Kilkesh. Jason Ford, he's going for his ninth point of the game. Should be a simple tap over for him. Wisely takes it with ease and style. And I think Tip's set up in the second half. John McGrath has gone to centre half forward since half time and he's drifted off Torrick Walsh all throughout the second half and created so much, got him so much possession. He's been key man in, in I think, pulling the strings. Paul Murphy again driving it long. TJ Reid, fantastic catch, but the finish is wide. I can see what Brian Cody is doing by putting TJ Reid in around the house at full forward and try and drive the ball into him. Yeah, look, it's the goal, they need goals. He's their best player to put him in near the goals, but you know it's very one-dimensional and Barrett sitting back there. So if it breaks and all tip are going to pick it up. Barry Heffernan. Good hands. Joey Holder. To Connor Fogarty. TJ Reid, 50-50 ball and he wins it, lays it off. Colin Finley has come in search of scores out around the half-forward line. And he gets his second point. That's a brilliant take by TJ Reid. He was fouled, going for the ball, he was fouled when he had it. Still got away the hand pass to Finley and super score. Colin Finley's first point. Billy Ryan's uh, scored uh, just a moment ago as well. So Finley on his first. Willie Connors is coming on for Tipperary. Dan McCormick is the one that's making way. Owen Murphy. The target is Walter Walsh. Oh. Barry Heffernan. Superb. From Nina Erogandor Tipperary. Paddy Deegan. Nowhere to go, really. Torig Walsh and Tullero. To Richie Lahey. TJ Reid is hovering again. Oof. In comes Walter Walsh. Bit of a stalemate there. Nobody giving an inch. Still available. And out comes Ronan Marr yet again. Brilliant play. Centre back, wing back, corner back. You can play him anywhere. He'll deliver. Owen Murphy. And Glenn Moore in his 35th championship match. Walter Walsh underneath it. But once again, it's Tipperary under the high ball. Superb. And it's Barry Heffernan again, Marty. Bar the first mistake of the game where he gave away a hand pass. He's had an unbelievable game here. Is that over the bar? Mark Hill. Mark Hill. Fantastic point. But Martin, that came from heaven, as I was saying. What a game he's had. That's three unbelievable catches in the second half. Here's Kyo, breaks away over the bar, and he's one of these subs that when Tip brought him in against Wexford himself, Willie Connors, uh, who else we got? Ger Brown that day as well. Jake Morris, all come on and scored a point each. And here's Joey Holden. He went down on the last ball, hurt himself, and he's got off injured now as well. Connor Delaney is on. And the Aaron's own club. Catching is... And fielding is just something to behold. Brilliant play. 
pass on this occasion is not a great one. Conor Fogarty is there. John Donnelly continues to work hard. Richie Lai, just on this occasion, the ball bypassed him. Tipperary have it again. Shamey Callanan. Well, that's a, that's that a should, free. That's that a should be a free. Thing, as you'll ever see, yeah. Ball comes down again towards TJ Reid and company. Tipperary man seems to have injured himself. Called Barrett, he's holding his left thigh. Here comes Walter Walsh. Here's all brilliant defending. Comes back outside. TJ Reid just left it behind. The ball is bubbling all over the place. And once more, Tipperary with their backs to the wall. And it's Party Mar. And it was Party one of them. It was Party that made the block as well. A lot of white helmets in there. I'm fairly sure it was Party Mar. An unbelievable block. Up towards Willie Connors. Connor Delaney bravely going down on the ball, laying it off. Far as Richie Lai. Lai gathers it. John Delon, John Donnelly there with him. Lai he blocks it. TJ Reid. Tony Walsh has gone inside. They need to create goal opportunities, but they'll be happy to take the point. Tony Walsh's first point in this All Ireland final. Critical, Kenny, they're not giving up. They won't give up, but but here's Walter Walsh, he's thinking goal here. And look at Paddy Maher, stands in front of him, keeps behind the ball, what a block. And he ended up getting back up and winning the ball and clearing a great piece of play by, I suppose, the real leader, you know, Stephen Callan, but at the back, Maher, for over 10 years now. Brilliant uh, wing back, centre back, and uh, shown his work there again, and Jason Ford going off there now. And Jason Ford has done his bit for Tipperary. Jake Morris is on, Carl Barrett. Has picked up a leg injury, and the player that's coming on is Sean O'Brien from Newport. As temporary bench is now required by Liam Sheedy. And a warm round of applause from the temporary supporters. Kilkenny put the pressure on. Hefty challenge. And Sean O'Brien, Walter Walsh, fair one. Colin Finley, flicking it forward. Comes back outside towards John Donnelly. They're queuing up inside. Ball runs on. There's an opportunity here. And Tipperary had the situation under control. But once again, Ronan Marr. Two Mars have been superb. Willie Connors. Played for a little while with the Tipperary footballers. Dropping this one in, Old Murphy comes off his goal line, being pursued by Jake Morris. Ball straight down the middle towards Paddy Deegan. Deegan laying it off. Connor Delaney. As Kilkenny continue to chase. Nice ball inside from Billy Ryan. TJ Reid coming across. Working hard is John McGrath, laying it off for the brother. The diagonal ball, and Tipperary looking sharp. Jake Morris twisting and turning. The body language would suggest that that's over the bar. Brilliant, brilliant play. Scored a crucial goal in the under-20 All-Ireland uh, semi-final recently, and he certainly is a player with rich potential. Isn't it? That was a great score, Marty. Started by John McGrath, and he went back won the ball in front of his own half-back and gave it to Noel on the, on the way out and he played a lovely ball into Morris's path and he's a player who's grown and grown and grown as you said during the year I think that Munster final goal in the last day in the under 21 has really, has really come of age and here's Jake again this time great block down from Paul Murphy from Jake Morris another one of the Nina old lads and this time while he recovered the possession ball is driven wide eight wides for Tipperary in this All-Ireland final but the scoreboard says it all. Just about eight minutes to go. 28 points to 19. 319 to 19. And Tipperary. In control. Sean O'Dwyer. Outside the Kilkenny 65. Let's fly. And it sails between the posts. That's a goal and two points for the Killinall. Sensational wing forward. Yeah, tip one of Windows, I learned, I think. 
the rejuvenation of himself and Colin Barrett this year under Liam Sheedy I think is massive in terms of the run they've had the two of them have been brilliant throughout the year and last year not that involved at all and you know the question marks over whether they'd even be back playing it for County Hurling the two of them have been immense under Sheedy Connor Delaney laying it off first Connor Fogarty Paddy Deegan sending it back up again Tipperary masterful in the air Paddy Maher under a little bit of pressure Gives it back far as Barry Heffernan. Playing really well. Full back. Crossfield ball with intended. Didn't reach its target. Paul Murphy read the situation well. Nice hands. Nice pick up. It's Billy Ryan. Incisive and indeed quite decisive. That's a fine score. Yeah, he's a lovely hurler. He reminds me a little bit of Eddie Brennan when he said, look, a brilliant pick up. Very quick. Got the head up and let it look simple over the bar. They need goals though uh, at this stage, you know, they're going to need a goal straight away nearly if they're going to have any chance in this. Brian Hogan goes short on this occasion for his Noel McGrath. Little flick up, nice wrist by Paddy Maher. Hugh Lawler gets there ahead of Jamie Cannon. Cannon making it a little bit difficult for him, chasing. Good play by the fullback from O'Loughlin Gales. Paddy Deegan. Torrig Walsh back to Deegan once more. Connor Fogarty. It's the time to gather because there's nobody from Tipperary near him. But when that ball is delivered, Tipperary are just doing this for fun at this stage because every ball is driven long. They really are underneath it. They're fielding and their distribution is top class. Yeah, well, look, they're very, very strong in the air. The, the two Mars as, as usual, but the player, Barry Heffern and Seamus Kendi, you know, Dave. They've had to fight for the place on this Tipperary team. They came in for the semi-final. The two of them have been absolutely brilliant out there today. Uh, they're big men. They're attacking the ball. Look, it's been comfortable for Tipperary in the second half. They've sent it off. It's probably the big turning point in the game. And uh, But I think Tipperary also up, up their performance massively in the second half. Tony Maher is going off as a blood substitution. The Liam McCarthy Cup has the black and amber, blue and gold ribbons. But right now, with five minutes to go or thereabouts, the feeling is that Liam McCarthy is going to Tipperary. James Barry is coming on. He's uh, just a blood substitution there for Paul Ma. Ball is dropping in again. Ball hops out over the end line and wide. Four minutes to go. For Brian Cody, it looks like disappointment. Connor Delaney gathers the short puck out from Owen Murphy. James Marr is battling hard. Referee has blown his whistle. He's given a free. But there's no doubt about it, Michael. The turning point was the sending off for Richie Hogan. Yeah, huge, huge moment. And uh, look at he's not. He's been around a long, long time. It was silly. He was rash. He came charging in. Uh, this ball has gone wide. He came charging in. There was no need for Kilkenny were well in the game. You know, they dominated the first 20, 25 minutes. Um, and look, there he is. Like he knows he's going to be very, very disappointed. He's been a great servant to Kilkenny, and uh, you know, so has this man. And it's going to be a very, very hard defeat for him to take. And this time last year, Tipperary looked to be in the doldrums, and we saw Liam Sheedy a minute ago. What a what an impact he has made in coming back into Tip this year. Noel Maguire was twice an All-Star back in 2009 and 2010. Playing his 43rd championship appearance today. Paddy Deegan playing his 18th. Back first, Paul Murphy. Seamus Kennedy attacking the ball ahead of John Donnelly. Quick ball inside. John McGrath. And it's over the bar. Three points for the corner forward from Lockmore. That's the line. Yeah, Seamus Kennedy, you know, we mentioned him a few times already. But a um, key man a number of years ago on the tip team had gone away, gone a bit astray. There's Tariq Maher back on. But uh, look at over the year since the first time I saw them down against Cork in Park and Cueve, they've been massively impressive. Apart from the Munster final, the best team in the country all year and uh, they're going to be deserving all Ireland champions. Ball into the centre. Tipperary going for the score from way out the field. That is some, some point. Off the stick of Ger Brown, one of the new emerging stars coming 
from the under-20 racks. And he is going to be serious. He is a great player, uh, watching him for a number of years, minor under-21. Outstanding. Just about two minutes, well, a minute and a half left in this All-Ireland final. The word coming from the sideline, there could be three extra minutes. That will be confirmed shortly. Colin Finley. To Pereira, there in numbers, Ronan Marr trying to dig it out. Finley has it once more, bearing down and goal. Still Finley, and the referee has gone as herself. It's a free end for Kilkenny. It just looks, even if they do score a goal, it's too little, too late, I'm afraid, for the Cats on this particular day. I have no doubt that TJ Reid will probably go for goal. That gives you an idea of what it's like along the line for the Tipperary goalkeeper in defence. That's the angle. 11 points between the teams. TJ. Blocked, pulled up, cleared. And Seamus Kennedy chases after it. Great play. Giving it into the centre to John McGuire. They're finishing in style. They're finishing with a flourish. Back off the post. Hugh Lawler defending well. Shami Callanan. Bursting forward, Conor Delaney fouls, and the referee, in fact, has given a free out for taking too many steps. Yeah. Three minutes of additional time now confirmed. So Ronan Maher stepped out straight, straight at him in fairness and blocked it out, and a free out there for Kenyon. Here comes Kilkenny, Walter Watch. Mad scramble just outside. The Tipperary D. Okay, Kenny Hallett. Good work on this occasion by Richie Lai. Trying to dig it out once again. And Tipperary are giving nothing away. Absolutely nothing. Sean O'Brien from Newport. North tip. Nice little stick work by Mark Hill. The follow up was superb. And the finish just a little bit off. But Tipperary, with Ger Brown and so many others coming through, like Mark Hill, Jake Morris, there is new stars emerging, and this will be a huge, massive, significant victory for them as well. Noel Maguire, quick hands. Ferris Willie Connors, who lets fly, and the slither goes straight between the posts over the black spot. And Tipperary are really flying it. And four subs come on the last and scored a point. The four of them have done it again today. Don't know if I ever saw that happen before. Ger Brown, Mark Yo, Willie Connors and Jake Morris. Four of them come in today a point each. Four of them the last day against Wexford a point each. And people thought Tip hadn't got a bench. Ball breaks down into the path of Big Walter Walsh. But nothing gone right for Big Walter. Here comes Torek Barr. Quick hands again. Over first, Willie Connors. He's going for a second. The man is on fire. Kiladangan will be so proud of Willie Connors. But the impact of John McGrath, Martin, this second half. He has won a mountain of ball in that position between midfield and his own half back then, laying off little passes all over the place. And he's just been immense in this second half, along with an awful lot of temporary players. Noel McGrath. Nice little ball out first, Mark Kill. Jake Morris, he's only one thing on his mind. Pass it in, here's Donald Wire! And the ball is yep. gone sailing wide. You see John Wire's hurl about 40 yards out on the ground. He lost it on the way in and he went to kick it. He has no future in football anyway after that, but it's, it's a free in anyway. Good work by Jake Morris, spotting that Odwire was free. He had no hurley, as he'd lost the hurley about out near the 45 metre line. Yellow card for Owen Murphy. Yeah, he's been arguing with James Owens for quite a while now, not happy since he got the belt and uh, very, very frustrated, at challenging a lot of decisions there over the last few months. 
Shevy Callanan. About to captain Tipperary to an All Ireland victory. And That's scoring it. a goal and two points in the process. Liam Sheedy, the prodigal son from Port Row and North Tipperary, has returned after nine years to the blue and gold and has once again beaten Brian Cody in an All Ireland final. He stopped the five in a row in 2010. He comes back after a, a long break to take charge of his beloved Tipperary and look at what he's done. Only four counties now have come back for losing the provincial final to win the All-Ireland. 1998, Offaly. 2004, Cork. 2012, Kilkenny. 2019, Tipperary. Liam Sheedy and Brian Cody shake hands. Cody congratulates Sheedy. Sheedy commiserates with the great manager himself, Brian Cody. But right now, tears of joy all over Tipperary. From Port Row, Gary Kennedy and Puckard, that's Liam Sheedy country. And today, he is very much a hero in the Premier County. Yeah, I think an amazing achievement, you know. I think we know Liam well, you know, we worked on the Sunday game, but he's a great leader of men and he showed that. Um, you know, just, just been brilliant. Apart from the Munster final, when they were missing Cahill Barrett and Bonner, they weren't good, they weren't at their best. Limerick were brilliant that day, but apart from that, they've been outstanding all year. Um, I just counted 11 different scores from play today. Incredible, incredible uh, second half. And they're sending off at a big bearing, but at the end of the day, we saw the full range of the hurl in the second half. All the great players came to the fore, all their leaders, and a brilliant second half after a shaky start. Amazing scenes on the pitch here at Cold Park. This means so much for Owen Murphy and Glenn Moore from his club. Well, he cannot be blamed today because he really played well between the posts. He wasn't really tested far once or twice, and he was uh, certainly under pressure when Richie Hogan was sent off. Huge disappointment for Kilkenny, but for Brian Hogan from Laura Dora in County Tipperary, for Shami Callanan from Drummond Inch, this is a very special day. Let's go down to the sideline for Shami Callanan with my colleague Claire McNamara. Seamus Callanan, you're an All-Ireland winning captain. We can see just how much it means. Unbelievable feeling. This is just incredible. Just incredible. It's everything we fucking dreamed of. Everything we dreamed of. I just think we put in so much work and finally get there in the end of it. It's just an unbelievable feeling. I'm so proud of that group there. Incredible. And another goal for you, one in every game, eight from eight. You look, know, that doesn't really matter when you have a performance like that from everyone else. You see the lads coming out of the back there, catching high ball, constantly, constantly driving out. It's a complete effort from everyone that's here, backroom, backroom team and 40 pound. So we'll just enjoy this, it's brilliant. Obviously the sending off had a huge uh, effect on the game, but you handled that well and you worked your extra man. Yeah, we handled it well. We just did, I suppose, playing our game and implementing our strategies on the game. Uh, we didn't deviate, even though we had a numerical advantage. So it was just, uh, oh look, it's just great. It's just great. We believed in the process and... I mean, it works, so that's it's great. That man, Liam Sheedy, back with you and done it again. Yeah, uh, Liam is a legend. I'm so delighted for Liam. Put so much into it here. So, look, it's great for everyone, the whole group. The serious support unit there as well, so it's just unbelievable. What's it going to be like for you now? You get to climb those steps to collect that cup. Every hurler's dream. Yeah, every hurler's dream since they're a young lad. And uh, finally going to get up those steps and I want to enjoy every bit of it. Thanks very much, Seamus. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Party Mar, congratulations, All Ireland champions. That was something else. Yeah, Dara, um, unbelievable. It's hard to put into words. Uh, we worked so hard for it all year, and um, thankfully, you know, we got there in the end. I know ourselves and Kenny's had some battles over the years, and you know, even they went to 14 men there today. They still put it, made us work really, really hard for it. And uh, look, we're great. It's back. To, it's great to back to where we want to be. Very different to this time last year, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, what a difference the year makes. You know. Um, Last year was tough, but look, we were struggling last year. This year we really knocked it down again and uh, we took a game by game. And the most championship was tough, but we got through it. And look where we are now today. And it is all worth it now, Daryl. For sure. The sending off was huge, but you know how you used the extra man. That worked out so well for you. And it doesn't always work for the team with the numerical advantage. Yeah, you know, I suppose we were in the same boat in the semi-final. You know, we knew that you know, it's very easy when you're, going to, when you're up a man that you can maybe slacken off a bit. But 
we made sure we didn't do that and we drove on and thankfully we got the, the win. Well done, Paul. Congratulations. Thanks, Enjoy. Well done. Well done. Well done. And such another fine performance from Porg Maher and from all of the Tipperary team really today. And what a return for Liam Sheedy, his first year back in charge. And he does just what he did in his last year in charge the last time. And that was claim the All-Ireland title by beating Brian Ke uh, Cody's Kilkenny. Impressed, Donal Logue? How can you not be? Huge performance. How can you not be, Joanne? The second half, Tipperary were outstanding. Now, I will say I, I was surprised with the lack of opposition that Kilkenny did give him in the second half. Even though Kilkenny went down to 14, man, I did think it was going to be closer. I couldn't have seen Tipperary running out 14 point victors, but that's nothing to take away from the performance. Like you'd Ronan Maher, Noel McGrath, Noel McGrath especially gave a performance for the ages. I don't know if there's anyone ever has as many possessions in an all Ireland final. And some of his skill, even in the first half when things were tight, he was outstanding, but he gave an exhibition in the second half. I, I think that's been a little bit harsh on Kilkenny, being honest, Donald, because I think the one team you don't want to go down an extra man to is Tipperary, because you just said it, Noel McGrath, he used the ball so, so well. And I think Kenny were just basically, they hung in there as best they can, but... OK, more on that in a moment, but as you can see, the Tipperary captain, Seamus Callanan, is about to get his hands on Liam McCarthy, so let's head back to Marty. John Horne, the president of the GA, about to present the Liam McCarthy Cup to Seamus Callanan. Tipperary, All-Ireland champions for the 28th time. They'll be singing Sleeve Naman in Borussia Kane, Borussia Lee, Clare, Clamel, Nina Rusgray, Tommy Barra and Mullinahol. Today is Tipperary's day in Quilt Park. An emotional day for the people of Tipperary. Their second half performance was awesome. They scored two goals and 16 points. 2.14 from play in that second period. Remarkable. Here is the Tipperary captain, Shami Callan. Luke Ryan here and Luke Ryan, Luke Laskale. Tawn Ahasorn, currently McCarthy, Gagaka, her son, Foran, Tipperary! It's a great honour for me as a proud Tipperary man to lift this cup on behalf of the Tipperary Senior Hurling Panel of 2019. I suppose our journey started back last November with the most committed group of players that we could ever imagine for. So firstly, I'd like to thank every one of those players. There's 40 men on that panel and they've given absolutely everything for a blue and gold jersey since we met up the very first day up in Morris Park. So I'd like to thank you so much for that, lads. You're unbelievable. I'd like to thank the referee, the officials, and all the linesmen and ground staff, stewards, and everyone here in Crow Park for, I suppose, having everything here on display for us in perfect order. And I'd like to thank you all very much for that. to the Tipperary County Board and Supporters Club who support us year in, year out. It's amazing the support we have from you and long may it last and thank you very much. <laughs> to Declan Kelly and Teneo, our sponsors that came on board this year. They've been unbelievable and they've provided an unbelievable platform for us as players to be able to go out there and put on a performance like we did today. So Declan and Teneo, thanks so much for all your support. To all the players, their families, their friends, their partners who have supported us all on this amazing journey. You've been there through us, through thick and thin, all the ups and downs over the last few years. You've always stood by our side and provided that support to for us and we couldn't be more grateful for that. <laughs> to our backroom team, you see the job you guys have done with this group of players. I suppose, especially even the last day in the semi-final against Wexford. So it's a huge credit there to Mick Lossi and Declan Maher, who are my source for the year, to have us in the shape on the pitch there today. Thank you very much, lads. <laughs> to our physios, Paddy O'Brien and Tom Quinn, and our doctor, Brendan Murphy, 
You're incredible, lads. And thank you so much for everything you provided us throughout the year. Next, we have two great lads, three great lads. We have Brian Statham, John Sheedy, and Cormac McGrath, lads. And everything that we ever asked for throughout the year, you were there to support us. And it means everything to us, lads. You're unbelievable, so thanks very much. Our spring coach, we chained the Cormac as spring coach. He was unbelievable, and you can see it there in the, the old legs near the end. We were still going, so thank you very much. To uh, Darren Gleeson, came in as goalkeeping coach. Unbelievable to see the job he done with the boys there as well. So thanks very much, Darren. To Gary Sweeney, our dietitian and nutritionist. We couldn't have asked for more. Everything was laid on for us. Thank you so much for being able to put all that together for us to have us in the shape we are today. Then we have Damien Young, Sean Fling, and Finn Briody. The guys done, I suppose, countless hours of video analysis and any work we ever wanted, lads, you were there, so thanks so much for that. We've Ray Bayan and his team as well on stats. You were incredible throughout the year, lads, the info that we had from you, so thanks again. To Billy O'Shea and John Smith, we wanted for nothing all year, lads, so thanks so much for your support, always. We had the great Owen Kelly come in, lads, to do some individual work with us. So, Owen, thanks so much for your guidance around the team. On to our s &C guys. We had Deirdre Carr there to back up. An absolute legend in Carborough, Caroline. He put some serious work into us, lads, and that work didn't go unnoticed there on the pitch and allowed us to perform as best we could. So thanks so much, guys. We'll move on to our incredible management team. We had Tommy Dunn, Darry Egan, Eamon O'Shea, unbelievable men, unbelievable temporary men who have given absolutely everything, guys. And guys, that was to be seen on the pitch. Their energy every single night we went into training, lads, was unbelievable. So thanks so much. And what do we say about this next man? <laughs> the one and only, Mr. Liam Sheedy! Liam has been a bundle of energy, lads, since he came back. And also as a group, lads, we can't thank you enough. The platform he put on for us, lads, the backroom team he put, he put together, everything was laid on for us. We could not have wanted for more. And thanks so much, Liam, for your dedication, your energy, and everything that you've given to the Tipperary jersey. I'd like to thank the Tipperary supporters. He came out in force, lads. We needed you, lads, every step of the way. Thanks so much for making the journey up here. And we will celebrate this, lads, for the next few days back in Torrance and Drummond Inch. And lastly, but not least, lads, I'd like to say three cheers to Kilkenny. Kilkenny are an unbelievable rival of ours, but we have incredible respect for them. Thank you so much, lads. We put on a great show out there today. He gave absolutely everything for your jersey, as he always do. You can be very proud of yourselves, and thanks so much for a great game, guys. I'm sure we'll meet you well along, along the way again. So three cheers to Kilkenny. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Tip it all about! Oh, what a brilliant performance yet again, all season long, from the Tipperary captain, Shamie Callanan. And you heard Poor Maher there talk about the hurt of last year. All Ireland champions in 2016, beaten by that piece of absolute magic by Joe Canning, right at the end of the All Ireland semi final the following year. And then, of course, last year they didn't, they didn't even get out of Munster. It shows some comeback, doesn't it, Anthony? Yeah, well, I suppose as soon as the, there was a lot of candidates banded around who was taken over from Mick Ryan after he quit. And you know, as soon as the name Liam Sheedy was mentioned, Joanne, I think the Tipperary County Board it was a no-brainer. You know, successful man on and off the field, and uh, you know, gives it absolutely everything. As he said beforehand, even if we were nowhere, I'd be giving this everything. But you know, when he was giving it everything, you just listen to Shamey mentioning the backroom staff there. What Liam surrounded himself with, I'd say, was immense. Uh, Top-class guys, and um, 
but I'd be lucky to work with Tommy Dunn in, in, in Dublin and, and Carbro Caroline and Limerick and, and you know brilliant guys, top guys, you wouldn't get them in any sport. Um, and you know, success is theirs today and deservedly they had a, a mid season sort of a blip, but uh, they came back fresh today, I felt, you know, and uh, deserve champions. I know they sent an off will be a major talking point, but uh, Great, great victory for Liam and, he, and his men. And I mentioned, I, a top class, mentioned a top class people, like I think they're touching it there, Declan Kelly and Tineo. I wouldn't underestimate, like when Shami said about the platform that gave and the importance of that type of support in the modern day game. And I know he's a passionate Tipperary man, a hugely successful man himself, but his support shouldn't be underestimated, I'd imagine. Well, we said the same, port, port Roman. <laughs> we said the same last year with JP McManus and the Limerick backroom staff and Tipperary. But I will say, the one thing I noted about Liam, the minute the final was over, he walked up the line, the whole management team came together in a hug, and that's, that's his greatest status, I think. He can bring people with him on the journey, and his delegation. Like, to bring Eamon O'Shea back in, you know, was a big call by him, but Liam doesn't mind doing that. He surrounds and, and himself. And the time of year that he brought Eamon O'Shea in, it wasn't before the, the league, it but wasn't, it was kind been, of in between things. You know, we've heard that in the lead-up, he's been kind of building, building, Joanne, and I think that's what he's doing. There's the two Mars, it's a great day for the, that family, they were immense, but I, I think he's been building, and, you know, I think, uh, talking down a couple of things, to make Seamus Callanan the captain was a big call because that was never, we never identified Seamus as a captain, but a big call to make. I remember watching another game during the league down in, um, there's the great Bonner Mar, obviously, you know, crucial league event. But uh, another game down in, in Limerick, a very froggy night in February. And I remember seeing Ron and Mar corner back, and I was saying, why is Ron and Mar playing corner back? He's not going to make it. Yeah. But without that, I think that's what Lean was building, that versatility in all his team. Thinking of him, his strategy and his vision for the future, to get Ron and Mar up here in the last two biggest games in the year, playing full back, he's used to that position. It's not so new to me. So I think that's been his greatest skill, and it's a, it's a major, major story. Plus, the, the way they handled it, John, they went hard early in Munster. You know, they went down into Cork, which was a huge performance. They beat Waterford, then they came up in tennis and beat Clare by 13 points. Now, I didn't see that happen. I thought Clare would absolutely lock the gates, but they came up and the heavy lifting was done really then. You know, Clare didn't win the Munster final, but still they had that bit of time to build up and be ready for that semi final game. And, uh, you know, that's, look at that's the reward at the end of it. Well, they're milking it, aren't they? They really are milking it. Oh, no, they're waiting for Tommy to really? come up ah, to make yeah. sure. Make sure the whole management team is this there. Is, this is the picture they'll be hanging in their, you know, sitting room, you know, and watching it for years and years to come. They're dead right. The amount of work that goes in in the backroom team That's the team is all yeah. like, I'd say, <laughs> like I'd say, you're, 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 I'd imagine, like you said, Liam is a busy man. I'd imagine if he's spending that in less than 40 hours at this job every every week, I'd be surprised. But you know, anywhere I've come across him over the years, be it business, sport maybe a couple of boards and things like that. He always brings a really positive energy to whatever That's he's doing. Energy, yeah. Energy, yeah. And I think that was seen all over the Tipperary team this year. And you did mention Eamon O'Shea before. And when Eamon O'Shea was brought in, you see the man behind Liam there, Tommy Dunn, there were question marks, what's yeah. that going to do yeah. to affect it's Tommy right. Dunn's right? Again, I go back to Liam on that, uh, Joanne, that that's the leadership Liam brings. That, like, Tommy was the coach. Eamon O'Shea has landed on mid-season. Like, would Tommy get his nose out of time? No, I'm sure that was discussed with Tommy. Are you happy with that, Tommy? Can we go with that? He led to us, and they would have worked together superbly. Okay. okay, Henry did talk about how Rona Maher was changed in terms of position this season by Liam Sheedy. Brendan Maher got a new role for much of this summer as well, and he, at the moment, is down pitch side with Clare. Yes, Brendan, congratulations. We've just seen your management team get a huge ovation up at, at, at the top of the steps there with the Liam McCarthy Cup. And just talk to me about the job that they and the rest of the management have done with this group, Brendan. Uh, it's hard to put into words, I suppose, the effort and the energy that they've given to the group. And really, they just laid a platform for us to perform and it's really handed it over to us. Um, everything that we look for, we got and more. Um, so I suppose it made our job very easy that we could just focus on playing and performing. And, um, as I said, anything, anything that we wanted or anything that was needed, it was there. Take me back through the game. The red card was huge and what, so close to half-time as well. But how you reacted to that felt very important. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose it was a harsh, harsh red card. I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, like I think the one thing we said at half-time as well in the few minutes uh, afterwards, we, we were saying, I suppose, Wexford kind of changed our game plan when we, they, when we went to man down. So we said we need to learn lessons from that. So... Uh, we addressed it, we spoke about it, so we said attacking the game as, as if it was 15 on 15, and that, thankfully that worked away, worked out. And for the group as well, you know, because well, this, this, all the experienced players last year was, was not a very good year, to put it mildly, and to be here today taking the Liam McCarthy Cup home tonight. That's great, yeah, I mean, 12 months ago, 
Uh, myself personally, I was lying on a couch watching the All-Ireland after getting surgery and uh, it's, you know, it's what a difference a year makes. And for the group as a whole, uh, two disappointing years um, since 2016, so it's, it's great to, to get there again today. Adam well Brennan, congratulations. Well done, sir. Claire. Oh, yeah, sorry. Liam Sheedy, we saw you there lift the Liam McCarthy Cup with some of your backroom team. You certainly enjoyed that. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a long journey, and I guess on the 30th of June, it, was, it looked like we were a long ways away from here, and people were probably very unimpressed about our quarter-final victory, but, you know, we built massive momentum in that semi-final when the real questions was asked, and thankfully we carried that momentum into the final today. You know, we went those few points down earlier on, and we needed Nyla Mara's goal. We were gasping for air at the time, but once we got the goal, we settled, and, look, the second half, I thought, you know, we played some outstanding hurling, and just delighted overall. These lads have put in massive effort, and look, most people have questioned their character, questioned their ability to go into trenches and various things and today thankfully they gave, they gave all the answers in, inside the white lines and that's ultimately today is not about me Claire, it's about that wonderful wonderful group of players that's given me everything since the middle of November and you know thankfully they get their just rewards today. In a massive second half performance, obviously you did have an extra man, what's your thoughts on that, the I, red card and obviously I, it can be tricky to deal with an extra yeah, man I honestly didn't see it clear, I mean it, it seemed to indicate that it was high, I, I was a long ways away from it there and obviously it was a massive turning point in the game you know, as I said, for long periods of that first half, we were gasping for air. And I thought Cahill played the extra man very, very well. Give us a little bit of ability to break the ball away. And once the ball broke away, we spoiled. But having said that, like Rona Maher, Brenda Maher, Seamus Kennedy, Paulie Maher, Barry Heffernan. I mean, I just thought our defenders were colossal all day. And, you know, really, I thought they set the platform for us. Disappointed with some of our distribution at times. It wasn't the way we'd, we'd like it to be. But ultimately, we'd, we'd done enough and, and we, we played well today. Maybe an unexpected winning margin, I suppose. Everyone is predicting this big tight final, but obviously yeah. the red card yeah, had that bearing. I guess, you know, that's why may, probably the sending off probably made the scoreboard look a bit false in the finish. But, you know, I have players that if they get on the ball, they can do serious things with them. And thankfully, we got some, like, some of the scores we took from distance today were of the highest order. So, just thrilled, just thrilled. And I suppose such a huge turnaround in fortune and feeling from Munster final day. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, ultimately it is all about the big prize, you know. And, I mean, All-Ireland final 2019, you know. I guess for this team, you know, there's probably been a lot of question marks asked about this team. You know, the reality is when you look back in this decade, Tipperary have won three finals in this decade. I think that's a really, really good return. So I think we have some of the best players that ever wore the blue and gold jersey wearing it right now. And I'm just pleasured and privileged to be, on, uh, to be working alongside them. And you've done it again. What's it going to be like now to bring this back home to Tip tomorrow night? It's, it's, it's special, you know, it's a special county. I think obviously, you know, born and bred. There's blue and gold running down through my veins. You know, Portro is my first, and first, first love, Tipperary second. And it's a special day, as I said. You don't really care when Liam Sheedy's back in Turles tomorrow night once Liam McCarthy is. Congratulations, Liam. There, thanks. That could well be the line of the day as well there from Liam Sheedy. And you can see what sort of a perfectionist he is talking about how some of their passes went a bit astray today. But Tipperary, Liam Sheedy's Tipperary are the all